So 2024 began for me with an extreme feeling of burnout. This is the first video that I am making in 2024 because I just needed to get back to an equilibrium between work and life and creativity and joy. And I was really, really struggling for the month of January. I'm finally at a point where I feel like I've got some of that equilibrium back, but I really wanted to share this because I know that other people are feeling it too. And I think so often the kind of content that we see within the knitting world is just productivity, productivity, like all of these things that I made. And for me personally, watching any of the everything I made in 2023 videos, which I've which I've done in the past, I have participated in, was exhausting. So maybe you're feeling like me, the new year isn't the clean slate that you were hoping it would be. And I hope that this video gives you a little bit of solidarity and companionship in that feeling. So um, without further ado, welcome to my channel. This is the M to the third knitting channel, and this is a video about burnout. I really wanted to film a video about the burnout that I have been experiencing. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, so I really want to be intentional about talking about this from my point of view and my experiences with this feeling because I think so many of us um, are feeling this right now. Like we've had so much going on as like a collective world. Um, it's just, there's just like a lot to hold. And I didn't realize how burnt out I was until I came back from winter vacation. I had had this break where I started to feel a bit rejuvenated. Um, and then when I went back into that schedule, I was like, I can't do this. I really can't. So I really realized something was wrong when I didn't want to make a decision. Not like a decision capital, but I didn't want to make any decisions. Like, you know, Kay would be like, what do you want to do for dinner? And I was like, I, I literally have zero capacity to even think about what I want and to communicate that. Nonetheless, go to the store, cook. Like, I was just like, just put something in front of me. Like, that was like, that was the capacity that I was at. I noticed that I was looking for quick dopamine hits instead of investing in things that would give me bigger, longer term dopamine hits. So, you know, like a lot of sporadic shopping, um, a lot of like just eating like treats, um, but not really savoring them at the same time like it wasn't again there was like a lack of intentionality kind of in just in the way that I was um living I also simultaneously felt like I couldn't relax fully like when I would sit down to try and like fill my cup it it wasn't it was like the cup had a hole in it <laughs> and so all of that that was like trying to fill up just was like leaking out at the same rate and so specifically what I wanted to mention here was how I noticed it affecting my creativity, which for me largely manifests in knitting. A piece of this that I've recognized is that when I am sort of at this capacity, my creativity really takes a back burner. And I find that what I want to do is just work on projects like this that are not very challenging for me, technique-wise. Um, I'm really excited about both of those sweaters, but they're such big projects that, 
you don't see progress as drastic as spending an hour on this where I have my little stitch marker and I'm like wow I've knit an inch or whatever I can spend an hour on these bigger projects and it's like a few rows <laughs> and so I made my list of everything that I made last year and that was in preparation to do and everything I made in 2023 video and I just noticed like a lot of it, a lot of it wasn't very challenging or the challenging projects that I did pick, I didn't finish. And I don't want, I don't want to do that. <laughs> there are bigger projects that I'm really excited about that I want to work on. I also found that I'm knitting a lot more gifts for people. And I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. I've been a knitter for a long time and I have, I have like a, a decent sized wardrobe. I have been feeling like I'm missing some new pieces in my closet. So those are some changes that I wanna make for this year. I'm not starting off strong <laughs> by knitting this Musselboro hat. And I, you know, I also think that if I set very defined rules for whatever this moment is, it's not gonna actually benefit me in the long run. So I'm really just kind of following my whims. Um, I think the awareness of like why I might be prioritizing something over the other feels good as opposed to like setting rules and being like, no, you can't do it that way. That's never never the vibe but I am also the consummate Libra trying to find balance everywhere I can so I'm gonna finish this hat I'm gonna knit it I'm gonna work on some of the other projects and yeah we'll see we'll see what tomorrow brings as I kind of ease back into um, you know an equilibrium I am noticing my excitement around playing with color, playing with new patterns, kind of going outside of the box, not really worrying if it's gonna work out or not. It was almost like my resources to make were so limited that I didn't want to do anything that I wasn't 100% sure that it was gonna turn out. Now it's tough because a lot of the symptoms of burnout are very similar to anxiety and depression. And I am an anxious person. I have anxiety <laughs> and I am on medication for it because it is debilitating when I am not on medication for it. Um, and so it's, it's like, is this a symptom of needing to be on a higher dose of medication? But as I have worked with my therapist and um, kind of troubleshooted what is going on, I've definitely realized that like, yes, I have anxiety <laughs> and yes, I am burnt out. And like, what do those two things, those diagnoses, I guess, look like and how do they manifest? And um, a, a lot of the things that help me manage my anxiety also help me manage burnout. But when I am burnt out, it's harder to motivate myself to do those things. The goal of sort of implementing these changes is not for a quick fix, not a band-aid over like a gaping wound, but to be building in rituals and routines that make it so that I don't just like burn out in the way that I'm feeling, I have been feeling. The first biggest thing which has which was pretty hard for me was explicitly asking for help and finding tangible ways for the people around me, my family and friends to help me. Second is I really took a hard look at my obligations and I eliminated some of them. So I had to, um, you know, potentially let people down by standing up for myself and um, taking some of that responsibility and obligation off of my plate. I also am taking time to actually rest. 
Uh, I kind of got assistance with that a couple weeks ago because we had a terrible ice storm here in Portland. We were forced to just kind of like really slow down. And I noticed coming back from that that I started to have a little bit of creativity. I finished my muscle burra last night while um, watching TV with Kay. It turned out pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Um, and I really like the way it fits. I did run out just at the very tippy top, which I sort of anticipated um, might happen, but I just used some pretty similar colored yarn and you can barely tell. I found that focusing on this project, which was honestly mostly stuck in it, right? Like for the last few days, um, it was kind of making me feel guilty about the fact that I wasn't working on something a little more complex. This is what I was talking about. One of like the symptoms, I guess, of my burnout is definitely wanting to do simple projects. And I also, I just don't want to get stuck. On the flip side, a sign that my burnout is kind of like ebbing <laughs> is the fact that I went and did some dye experimenting yesterday. Um, I'm getting my dye studio kind of cleaned up for the new year so that I can like get rocking and rolling because in just over a month is the Rosity Yarn Crawl and I will be there with some yarn at Starlight Knitting Society. So um, yeah, I've been, I really worked hard to kind of create a palette for Sacred Sheep, which was the festival that I did in November. So I'm gonna bring a DK weight base with all of those colors with me to the Rosity Yarn Crawl. Um, but I wanna fill in some spots that I feel like are missing. Some lighter colors with like a little bit of variation. Um, so I did my first like sample of that. Um, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Gonna require some more tweaking for sure. But um, it was a good first step. And the fact that I was even like inspired to do that um, is, a good, is a good sign. In the last like couple of weeks, I've definitely started to see an improvement in some of my feelings. Like I'm definitely not feeling as irritable. I'm definitely having more energy just to like get my to-do lists done. Today I made a big old to-do list with some things that I have been avoiding for a while and I was able to just do them. Um, some of it was a little intimidating, but like I checked off everything, including making this video. <laughs> big piece of that recognition came from just like feeling that spark of creativity again. I cast on like two sweaters, I finished a hat, I went down into my dye studio in the basement and just like dyed for the heck of it, like to play around with a color. I'm definitely um, starting to feel like myself again and being very aware of sort of what led me to this past period of burnout and how I can sort of like live my life in a way that doesn't just inevitably end in one of those valleys. I wanted to make this video because if I could reach one person who was also struggling with burnout, then it would feel worth the work. If I made one person feel better about how little knitting they've been doing or how their practice hasn't been exactly what they want it to be, then it would be worth it. I'm also not deluded enough to think that this is the end and that I have beat burnout. Like, I'm still in it. I'm still working on identifying what I can do different how to make myself feel better and it's really just a day-to-day -day kind of journey. Um, if you're 
really struggling, then I would highly encourage you to seek whatever professional help you can find because my therapist has been an invaluable part of this. And yeah, I hope this gives you a little bit of faith. I'll talk to you very soon. And um, thanks for sticking around and being here with me.